In this video, we're going to introduce sequences. Sequences are very important um, in discrete mathematics. And the next type of proof we're going to learn is going to be proofs over sequences and summations. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So what is a sequence? Well, it's a representation of a pattern. Right? Patterns in mathematics can be rep represented by sequences. In particular, it is an ordered set of numbers where the order matters. So this is a sequence you may have seen before. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, dot, dot, dot. Uh, you know what the sequence is? This is the square numbers. Right? One squared is one. Two squared gives me four. So this is two squared. This is one squared. Nine is three squared and so on. 16 is 4 squared, 25 is 5 squared. So those are the square numbers. Another sequence, one, and so on. Um, this is an interesting sequence. This is the triangle sequence. which is interesting. So let's take a look at that, what that means. The reason it's called the triangle numbers or the triangle sequence is this, if we were going to create a triangle where both sides, one is hard to start with. Let's do a triangle of length where the sides are length two. So there's one side of my triangle and so we've got that side, that side, and that side. And each side is of length two. Well, how many dots are in this triangle? Well, there's three of them. Right? The triangle with the sides of length one is just a single dot. A more interesting problem is a triangle with sides of length three. Right? Each side is length three now. And if we count the number of dots in there, we're going to get that there's six. And we can continue this. Length four. Length three. And then I can add one. And if you count up those dots, you're going to get ten. And so on for fifteen and twenty-one and so on. That's how I got those numbers on the previous slide. Now, similarly, you may not have realized this or thought about it this way, but you could do the square numbers similarly. That's why they're called the squares. Is the square, two squared is equal to four, which is the number of dots in a square where all the sides are of length two. Right? So that's how we get the square numbers as well. Um, the triangle numbers are interesting because that's not something people have usually heard before. Um, another interesting thing to note about the triangle numbers is the difference between them is 2. Here the difference is 3. difference is 4, 5, 6, and so on. So that's another interesting characteristic of this sequence. Let's look at a different sequence. Here's a sequence. We have 1 half two-thirds, three-fourths, four-fifths, five-sixths, and so on. And the question is, what is an explicit formula for this sequence? Well, explicit formulas are nice because they have a single formula with a starting point 
that describes all the numbers in the sequence. So if we look back here, we can see that the, the input is 6 and the output is 21. So let's take a look and see which of these sequences, which of these formula would work for this sequence. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to start by looking at this first one. So I'm going to write out, now notice we start at 1 here. So what that means is I'm going to say A of 1, and I'm going to substitute 1 in for everywhere I see that K. So 1 over 1 plus 1 gives me 1 half. And then A of 2, because notice this goes for all integers greater than or equal to 1. So A of 2 is going to be 1, oh, excuse me, it's going to be 2 over 2 plus 1, which is going to be 2 thirds. And A of 3 is going to be 3 over 3 plus 1, which will be 3 fourths, and so on. And that looks mighty similar to our sequence up here. And in fact, this is an explicit formula for the sequence. But what's tricky is, is if we go to look at this next one, this b sub i, notice here we start at i greater than or equal to 2. Let's try that. So we have b of 2 equals 2 minus 1 over 2 is 1 half. And now for b of 3, we've got 3 minus 1 over 2 is over 3 equals 2 thirds. And when b of 4 is going to be 4 minus 1 over 4 is 3 fourths, which again matches our sequence. So this is another explicit formula. There are, in fact, infinitely many explicit formulas that represent this sequence. Let's check um, C. Look at C. So we're going to have C starts at 0. So we're going to have C of 0 is equal to 0 plus 1 over 0. Uh-oh. That is undefined. So C is not going to work, but A and B will work. And in fact, there's, since there's going to be an infinite number of elements that work, in a sense, this something else works as well. Now, one thing to notice is that the formula here has to go with the bounds, right? If you try to use the formula for B, but with the bounds for A, it's not going to work, right? If you use 1 here for I, we're going to have 1 minus 1 is 0 over 1, which is 0, which is nowhere in our sequence. So the boundaries and the formula themselves have to work together to get the right answer. Alternating sequences are kind of fun. So here's an example of an alternating sequence. 1 minus 1. 1 minus 1. 1 minus 1. And so on. See how it alternates between positive and negative. And there's a couple of different formulas. Once again, there's actually an infinite number of formulas that can we can come up with for this. Let's start with one. Well, one nice trick is noticing that if we take negative one to a power, like k, this is going to alternate. Because whenever k is odd, this is going to be negative. And whenever k is even, it's going to be positive. Right, because negative 
1 times negative 1, an even number, is going to give me a positive 1. But if I have a negative number of them, these two cancel each other out and give me 1 times negative 1. I'm going to get a negative 1. So here, uh, I have an explicit formula, except I'm not done yet. Remember, we have to specify what our bounds are. Because if I used, if I started at 1, if I said this was true for all k greater than or equal to 1, well, let's plug that in. 1 is an odd number, so this would give negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1. So that starts with a, a negative number, which our sequence does not. So that's not going to work. So instead, since we want to start with a positive number, we're going to need to start with an even number. So we could start at k equals 0. We could start at k equals 2, k equals 4, anything we want. Another way, of course, to do this is to say, let's do a of b. Actually, we can use a different variable. Let's go back. We'll call this b of i. And we can make this negative 1 um, to the k plus to the i to the i plus 1. Well, so now we have to figure out what values of i this works for. So notice, again, we want to start with a positive number, which means we need negative 1 to an even value. But we have i plus 1, which means i needs to be odd, so that i plus 1 will be even. So that works. Similarly, we could do c of j equals negative 1, i minus 3. And since we're subtracting an odd number, that means we're going to need to start with an odd number. Right. And as long as we start with an odd number, and we add an odd number, then we will get a positive starting value. So again, you can see how there's an infinite number of these sequences. I mean, an infinite number of explicit formula that works with this one sequence. So this is a fun sequence. Let's look at this. The sequence is 1 half, then negative 1 fifth, then positive 1 tenth, negative 1 17th, 1 26th, negative 1 32nd, and so on. And here I've given you the index. So why don't you pause the video and try to see if you can come up with your own explicit formula for the sequence. And I'll give you a hint, and that is, notice this is an alternating sequence. One way to maybe make it a little easier is instead of having the negative sign in front of the term, you can move that up to be in front of the, the 1. So we have negative 1s, which is just what we saw last time. So pause. And now that negative, that alternating sequence on the, in the numerator we can specify the numerator. I'm going to specify the numerator and the denominator separately. Break it up a little bit because otherwise it can be very tricky. So the numerator, notice, goes 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, and so on. Well, that's just the alternating sequence we saw before. Negative 1 to a k, except notice since I tell you the index has to be 1, if we sub 
put one in. That's where we start. We start at one. So that part's given to us. We don't get to decide where we start. We know we're starting at one. Negative one to the power of one will give me a negative number, but I have a positive number. So I'm going to have to add one or subtract one here. Either will work to give me uh, the appropriate numerator. And then the denominator, this one's also a little tricky, um, but if you look at the index, two, squ two squared, if we're looking at this index two, two squared is four, and our denominator is five. Three squared is nine, our denominator is 10. Four squared is 16, our denominator is one more than that. Five squared is 25, our denominator is one more than that. This is going to be k squared plus 1, right? Whatever our index is squared, add 1 to it. So if we put these together, we're going to get that our explicit formula for this sequence is negative 1 to the k plus 1 over k squared plus 1 for all k greater than or equal to 1, because that's given to us. All right. Now, notice along the way, I dropped saying that this was for all k in the integers, such that k was greater than or equal to 1. That is very typical when dealing with sequences because sequences always have the, the input, the index will always be over the integers. That's sort of the, the definition of a sequence is we, have, we are indexed by sequential integers. So it's very common to just sort of ignore that and uh, have that be implicit instead of explicit.